So guys, chapter 14, talk about lamps, ballast for lighting. There's major things I'm going to show you, pictures, mostly pictures. Um, if you guys remember the lumens, when we define the lumens, we said if you have certain amount of lumens, um, lumens is the unit that we met, unit measurement for lights. We measure lights and lumens. What they're defining here is a point source of candela produces an illumination on the surface of a sphere of one lumen per unit area at a unit distance. This is the definition of the, the lumen when, when you start getting deeper into it. So a candela over an area as a function of a distance. So that's really what, what, what this is. I want to, if you have, look at how nice they did the, If you have an area like this, and you have a source of light, actually right here, the light source is right here, and this light source is emitting light, and this light will hit this unit surface of a sphere, one unit, a foot by a foot um, of a surface, and the distance is one foot, so that will give you a one lumen, uh, one foot candle, one foot candle. So if you have... Um, one lumen go one lumen one lumen shooting to one square foot area bit and and it's one foot away from the source that will define the foot candle so the area the only thing i want you guys to remember from this is the foot candle equal lumen lumen over area really that's the only thing i would like to remember from it any question about the definition of a foot candle Lumen over area, lumen over area. If you are to do your lighting certification, uh, Nick, you get into all these spheres and, and calculation. For as far as I'm concerned, the definition that we need to go is lumen over area will get you the square foot, uh, the foot candle. Okay, so that's calculation of foot candle. We talked guys about um, when we talked about light, we talked about temperature. Um, and you're going to say Kelvin, 35 Kelvin, and so forth. I want to remind you of two things. When we talk about, um, this is a really nice, a really nice um, um, picture of high temperature. I don't know if you can see, this is obviously high. High temperature, this is low. Okay, so this is high temperature. High temperature and low temperature, high temperature and low temperature. Um, the only thing I want you guys to, to remember if if the Kelvin, if the temperature is low, it gets the light gets what? Reddish. If the temperature is high, the light gets blue. Blue. And we talked about this one here. They what they added here, they added high pressure sodium six light in here, incandescent light, halogen, um, metal halide. Standard clear metal halide, fluorescent light sits into this area, and daylight metal halide. So they're sitting all these type of picture where they sit into this uh, high temperature, low temperature um, spectrum, high temperature, low temperature spectrum. So when we install a lighting fixture like this, we're going to be asking, is it 3,000 Kelvin or is it 5,000 Kelvin? A 5,000 Kelvin will make the light actually look more bluish than a 3,000 Kelvin. 3,000 Kelvin will make it look reddish. That's the only thing that we want to care about. Who cares? It makes the people look be feel better about the light. Some people like the light to be very bright, white, almost bluish, and some people like it to be warm, reddish, right? So that's the definition of, of, of the Kelvin. Any questions about the Kelvin? K stands for the Kelvin. Kelvin. So high Kelvin, high temperature, high Kelvin, high temperature, um, more bluish, low Kelvin, low temperature, uh, low Kelvin, low temperature, um, and that will be more reddish. And we went through this one in the book, guys, too. Okay, so these are the th main things I want to, um, in, in your book, guys, it talks about the Kelvin. Um, color rendering index, another thing that I want to talk about, color rendering index is how it's an index of how good the light is in terms of distinguishing or discriminating between colors. So if I want to look at the blue and I see blue, not green, um, if the color, in, if a fixture has 100% color rendering index, then a green will look green, a blue will look blue. If it has a 10% color rendering index, then a green might look blue or vice versa. Does that make sense? So for the most part, guys, if uh, for 
you know, so if, if the color, render, color, the higher the color rendering index, the better the fixture. This curve, and I'm going to throw this one for incandescent mice, it will show you guys the, the percentage of, um, this one goes over the percentage of life over, let's go here. So we have percentage of voltage, percentage of life. So on this side is life. Oops. Life, and this is V, voltage. V voltage. What I want you guys to do, 100% of the life is, you get it at 100% of voltage. So actually, if you have a lamp that's supposed to burn 120 and you give it 120, this life, this lamp will live its expected life. And let's just say at uh, 10,000 hours. If you increase the voltage, if you increase the voltage, if you increase the voltage, the life will, if you increase the voltage right up to here, the lamp will get you more lumen. It will get you more lumen, but it will live, it will live short. It will live short. Two things you need to understand from this, guys. The more, the more you put voltage across an inc this is for an incandescent lamp. The more you put voltage across an incandescent lamp, the more lumen you get. This is more lumen. But what the problem is, the less life you can get. Here's less life. So take an incandescent lamp, burn it at, it's rated for 120, burn it at 140. What do you get out of it? More lumens. But what's the drawback? It will live shorter. So what's the heavy medium? The heavy medium is right in here where you can give the incandescent lamps um, the rated voltage, it will give you the rated expected life. The rated expected life. That's the only thing. And these are equations that you can calculate the life, expected life, if you change the voltage and so forth. I'm going to spare you the headache of doing that one. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Shapes of incandescent lamps, guys. So if you if you see um, a G, for example, can you guys see if you see an incandescent lamp with a G in the front of it? This is the shape of a G. Um, this is uh, a shape of a PS 2552. So car P A R, it looks like this one. Uh, look at all the cars P A R, parabolic. Um, so different R. Look how the R. So the manufacturers, guys. This is FYI only, the manufacturer standardized on different letters that they give to different shape of incandescent lamps. So, for example, if you look at the A's, all the A's look shape-wise look like this. A19, 23 is the diameter, and then they add the diameter of the fixture. The diameter of the, of, um, the largest, I think this stands for the largest diameter divided by eight, if I remember right. So 1 is 3 divided by 8 is the largest diameter of this fixture. This one, Ashley, um, this one is 40 divided by 8. What's 40 divided by 8? 5? Five? 5 inches. So this will be a 5 inch diameter. Um, um, this one is 25 divided by 8. That will get me, that will get me 3 point something inches, the diameter. Does that make sense? And the first letter stands for the time. The second number stands for the diameter. FYI only. FYI only. So that's what I would like you guys to do. Do them. Okay, here's the, if you forgot that one, here's how they do them. It's the diameter, that number divided by 8. That number divided by 8. That's how you find. The same thing goes for fluorescent lights. It's always divided by 8. Can't remember why the 8. Okay, incandescent lamps, a couple of uh, fixture incandescent lamps. This is just a couple of things about fluorescent lamps, guys, the, the base on how it's structured. Incandescent lamps, like we said, Ashley, it's an arc lamp. So you need to heat the cathodes so you can shoot the arc between the cathodes and the uh, So you need to shoot an arc. That's why they call them arc lamps. Um, so you shoot the arc. When you shoot the arc, like we talked guys about before, you create an uh, ultraviolet light in order to convert the non-visible light into visible light, you know what they do? They paint the inside of that baby with some type of phosphorus material that convert the non-visible light into visible light so we can enjoy that beautiful P8 above your head. That's all what I want you to know about it.
Um, you can, there's a lot of gases, treated gases inside it and so forth, but for the most part, you heat the, air, the cathode and the anode to create an arc, and there's a ballast that choke the current to maintain the arc. You pump the voltage to create an arc. The arc started. Now, when the arc started, now I need to lower the current so I can maintain the arc. And that's the whole principle of operation for that baby. Um, ends of these guys, they're single pin. Um, two, the most common ones is going to be 2 8 slim line. Um, um, this is single pin. Can you guys see that? They come in single pin or by pins. Can you guys see that, um, how the ends each have two pins? So most of the time, you're probably you're going to be dealing with medium T8 lamb and uh, T5 lamps, two pins, or T6 or T8 slim line. They call them slim line. So one pin or two pins, as these are most likely will be two pins as you install them in both sides. Comments, questions? Just a little bit about the structures. Okay, here's what I would like you guys to pay attention because we are electrical designers. The most, the, the most important thing actually I want to refer to is, it, is it a single pin um, T8, almost T8, these are the ones, or two pin T8, right? These are the most common ones you're going to be encountering. Uh, T12 is no longer in business because of energy code. Um, so that's a couple of, um, a couple of fluorescent um, abbreviation. Before we go ahead, guys, uh, T stands for tubular, thank you, tubular, that shape tubular, and the 8 stands for the diameter. So if I will measure the diameter of this baby, you take 8 divided by that magic number 8, and that will give you an inch. Everybody knows that? So if it's a 12, 12 divided by 8. If it's 5, 5 divided by 8, and that will give you the diameter of that fluorescent light. Make sense for any of these? There's U. The U shape, most likely you're going to be using, most likely T8. Different shapes, PLC lamps and, and so forth, but these are uh, circular ones. Circular ones I'm used to, a lot of circular ones coming in, in, in another light that we installed. Any comments, guys, about fluorescent lamps? Phil, my friend, different shapes, different types, um, and so forth. So that's, that's all what I want to emphasize on that one. Um, I want to emphasize also the T12, no longer in business here. Uh, your T12 for commercial, trust these one because of energy code, the T12ers. So moving on, guys, into the light, hot cathode, and so forth. You can read that. The ballast, we need a ballast. The only, the reason for the ballast, guys, most of the ballasts are instant start and rapid start ballasts right now. In the past, actually, they used to have the preheat ballast, where you have to have a little, anybody remember the preheat ballast with the starter? We have to have a, a little starter, and that starter give a, oof, a, a push um, to create the arc, start the lamp, and then when you start the lamp, you, un you can unscrew that starter, and the lamp is up and running. But when you turn it off, if that starter is not there, it wouldn't start. Anyway, that's technology with the ballast. The new ballasts are either instant start or rapid start. Most of these, if you guys go up there, there is no starter for this lamp. It's instant start and rapid start. That's that's the most the two common technologies you're gonna you're gonna uh, use. Here's an instant start or rapid start. If you have two lamps with a ballast driven by the same ballast, most likely this is how it's gonna be. Uh, wired actually, you're gonna, for as far as we're concerned, we're going to bring the 20 amp to this and my neutral, and um, and that's about it. 20 amp and a neutral, you bring it to the ballast, and from the ballast, they go to the anode and the cathode of each one of these lamps, and they heat them so they can start the arc. And then when you when you start the current, guys, when you start that fixture, the current is going to go very high, then the ballast will bring it down to an acceptable level. So let's say just this is sucking two amps out of the system. So at one time it might get uh, eight amps. As it start gets good, good amount of amps, and then it, it it levels it down into a two amps and burn forever. Burns forever. Any question guys about why do we ballast? 
Why do we have a balance? Pump up the voltage to start the current, to start the arc, and then lower choke the current because an arc is very high current, right? Choke the current to maintain the arc to, so we can enjoy the lamp, the light that's coming out of the lamp. Any comments, any questions? Comments, questions? Okay, different type of lamps and different type of configuration. The only thing, a um, lot of hardware, guys, that you can look at. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, rapid start, instant start. Um, here's this one. This is worth mentioning. The one, this one, um, Nick, is called rapid start, the way they wire it. And this one is called instant start. Rapid start, obviously instant, you, which one is faster, the instant or the rapid? The instant start. It's all about how fast you burn that thing, uh, that light and bring it up to speed. Instant start. Okay, a couple of fixtures. Sometimes actually what we do for the lights is we have a tiny little overload fuse. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fixtures, let's just say each one of these is one amp. So this current coming here is uh, eight amps. Now, do you guys want one fixture to short to take the, the 20 amp circuit? If you can, yeah, it's 20 amp. There's eight amps coming, feeding all these eight fixtures. What if a short circuit happened in one lamp? it will take the eight amps all together. So what they do sometimes is they have inline fuse, inline or inline fuse with each one of these fixtures. So if this fixture is too short, right? If this fixture is too short, it wouldn't take the circuit breaker. Not code requirement. They're called supplemental, supplemental overcurrent protection device. That you can add a supplemental overcurrent protection device to, to protect that particular fixture. By doing it this way, you have better protection for the fixture and you increase the reliability of the system. Now I'm guaranteed if um, I send Rob right above your head to fix, to change the light there, the, um, the lamps, and you short it, I'm guaranteed that the only fixture that we're gonna lose is that right one above your head. So that's a good application. They call them inline fuses. You don't install them on the, unless the customers ask for them. Some fixtures come come with these fuses, guys. Uh, especially compact, fluorescent, and incandescent lights. They come with this feature. Um, it's actually heat detection, so protect protect you from heat. Couple of compact fluorescent lights. Um, compact fluorescent. PTs. Okay, bases for uh, the incandescent lamps and the compact fluorescent lamps, energy code. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here and see a, a few things about this particular um, one, guys. Okay, there's a few things that you need to be aware with when it comes to light, guys, is energy efficiency. We use ComCheck, Ashley, to do the calculation. The second thing is also um, waste, hazardous waste. So when you deal with fluorescent, you have obviously fluorescent have mercury in them and have other gases that's hazardous uh, and you have to dispose them in a proper way. So that's the whole idea is if you here done what we collect them and we send them to a proper location where they can dispose them properly instead of dumping them in the river, right? The alternative. And then the frogs will have three legs instead of four legs. So these are all laws properly um, getting rid of all these fluorescent lights and at the same time having energy efficient fluorescent lights. So you talk about energy stars um, that the fixture have to have guys and based on the energy code now T12 we no longer can use T12 because it is it's not e efficient in the commercial building. You can buy it to your bit in your basement but you can't use it anywhere else. Anyway so that's what I want to say. LEDs are invading the market, guys. When we were looking at our project, as you can see, you can you can buy Ashley um, a two by four or two by two LED general purpose light right now, or you can buy a parking lot uh, LED light. The the drawback of LEDs right now is what the money, the spending. 
That's mainly really the drawback of it compared to a uh, typical 2x4 T8 um, rabbit or instant start ballast fixture. Oops. Okay. All right. Um, this, this one here, guys. Okay, that's the last slide here. This one, I want you to just please, could you please go to this one, which is table 14 once. This will compare between different ty type of fixtures. And I hate to talk about lights because all what we did this quarter is talk about lights. Um, so if you guys go there, please. This will um, actually will give you, it will compare between incandescent light, the one that can cook your meal for you, no longer will use, fluorescent light, mercury, metal halide, high pressure sodium, low pressure sodium. What I like about this sheet, guys, is it gives you a couple of things to compare between. I will look at the first lumen per watt. The more the lumen per watt, the better the fixture. Always. Why? It's efficient. It meets the energy code. Meets the energy code. If you look at the lumen per watt, guys, for uh, incandescent lamps, it's 23 lumens per watt, really bad. Fluorescent can go as high as 100, 100 lumen per watt, much better. Um, mercury, you can, mercury, we don't want to use it banned in the US, of course, skip the mer mercury. Metal halide, 120 lumen per watt, and high pressure sodium, 140. Low pressure sodium is the best, 180. But what's the problem with low pressure sodium? You can't find your car in the parking lot. It Color discrimination is almost zero. Okay, so if you guys look at the first one, the second then, the watt. Can you see the watts range that you can buy these? So what I like about the sheet, um, uh, Phil, my friend, is really compare between all these types of fixture in one little sheet. Okay, life, hours, look at the life hours. If I have a floor, now that will, that will give you an idea. Why do we use fluorescent in a commercial building? Look at the expected life for a fluorescent light, close to 2,000, 20,000 hours compared to an incandescent lamp that you can get as high as 8,000 hours. So what does that mean? It means it lives longer, cheaper to maintain, okay? Um, if you guys go to metal halide, 20,000, high pressure sodium, 24,000. The higher the hours, the better the fixture. Color temperature. Color temperature is also good for people, huggy feely people who would like to look at things and see things differently. Uh, color rendering index, that's my favorite. Color rendering index uh, right here. Color rendering index, guys, the most important one, um, incandescent lamps. Incandescent lamps can give you 100% color rendering index. I can see exactly your color if I put you, like we said, in the parking lot in Minnesota in June. That's the best color rendering index. Fluorescent, it can go from 50 to 110. What they do with the fluorescent uh, neck to make them good with color rendering index, they paint them, they treat the, they treat the fixture or the lamp to make it provide the better color rendering index, meaning I want to see a wider range of spectrum. Okay, here's, um, here's my, uh, my favorite. Can you guys see the, the low pressure sodium? Anybody can see what low pressure sodium has? Zero. You can almost, almost you can see black and white here. It's only black and white, no color. Everything looks almost black and white, almost black and white. So if you're looking for your, your car in the parking lot and you can't peep it, then uh, you're a good luck trying to find it. So that's why, yes, it's a good fixture to use, but the color rendering index is, is really bad. Okay, so the higher the number, the color rendering index, the better. And keep going, guys, all the way to potential for good color rendering index. All of them have potential treatment. Lamp cost. Lamp cost is a big deal, guys. If you look at the incandescent lamp low, high uh, metal halide, medium fluorescent. Uh, operation cost. Um, good operation cost is a big deal. Well, that's why we choose. That's why we're here, guys. 99% of the time, as of now, commercial. We're almost here or here if we're outdoor, right? In these two areas. Because that's kind of the optimum design between all things considered. All things considered. Right underneath it, they added, guys, LEDs. Look at the LEDs per watt compact, fluorescent and LEDs, some conversion watt, live color rendering index, color temperature, color rendering index 85, 82, lamp cost, and the operation cost. The futures for LEDs, guys, a lot of LEDs and compact fluorescent, especially residential right now, is moving on. And if you compare the values, color rendering index is, is not bad, right? 
the lux is not bad, the life expectancy is getting bigger and higher. So you can see that we're migrating more from here into the LEDs, from here into the LEDs, especially the LEDs. Any question about this comparing between all these different type of lamps? Any question, guys? Comments, questions? Okay, so that's all what I wanted to do in this chapter. Um, yes, please. So LED fixtures is really important if you're watching um, the TNC or the harmonic distortion. Yeah. Harmonic distortion, total, total harmonic distortion. Because they're worse than human suggestions. Very good point. Very good point. With LEDs, guys, every time, every time we take, I don't want to go even there for harmonicas, every time you take a nice, beautiful sinusoidal wave and convert this wave into DC, what do you think you're going to lose? You're going to get, when you convert it into DC, you're going to create harmonics. Harmonics are unwanted frequencies overlapping the, the system. Who cares? Heat equipment and heat over. So to solve this problem, most likely will derate, uh, you know, instead of, if I can't put 17 fixture on a 20 amp circuit, put, instead of 17, put 12 fixtures, uh, bigger conductors. That's a good application for, for accommodating for har harmonics. You're absolutely right. Every time, guys, you take an AC and you convert it to DC, or you alter the AC, you create a major harmonic. So what is the DC thing? Everybody knows what a LED is. They take the, they take a driver, 120, you take your 120, which is a driver, here's my 120 volt, and you convert it here into a 24 volt DC, and you burn these LEDs at it. So you took a 120 voltage, like that one above your head, and you convert it to 24 volt, and you dump it across these tiny little um, um, emitting diodes to burn them. So what did, what did you, you altered the, uh, the sinusoidal wave. Every time you alter it, you created the harmonic. Very good point. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I want I want you guys when you read through this chapter, please, is to pay attention to the hazardous waste for fluorescent and LEDs. And they say compact fluorescent have mercury in them. So you have to dispose it in a proper way. You have to pay for disposal. And energy code. Certain things will not meet the energy code, and we went through calculating the energy code. Any comments, any questions before I leave this topic? and we go into fixtures. Do me one favor, Ashley, in your entire life. Can you guys read the chapter? And I'm talking about how to and everybody else. Can you guys read it one time? There's a lot, lots of good information to know. Uh, it will help you as you move on if you're doing lighting. If you never do lighting, it will be good information to know. Okay, I'm gonna um, switch directly into um, fixtures. So this is about the lamps. The next one is about fixtures. And the reason why I flew through these guys because all the, we're dedicated this quarter to lighting. We talked a lot about lights. It really is a lot, of, a lot of things about lights. Next quarter, you would never hear Chad saying lights again, in terms of lumens. And we assume that you know compact fluorescent LEDs and all the stuff where to use them, P5, P8, and so forth. And we move on. Okay. Any question about lamps? We talked about different lamps, guys. If you if you don't know anything about lamps, just see P8 for, for T8 and P5 for commercial building. Right? And um, metal halide and high pressure sodium for outdoor. Really. And now, Ashley, LEDs for everywhere. LEDs and compact fluorescent everywhere. Really, that's it. There's a couple of uh, other lights, inductive lights, and we will spare you these. Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Yes. The different construction. Um, most of what I'm used to is two pins. Yeah. Um, I don't know, other than the construction. I don't know if the ballast is going to be different. Um, yeah. No. 
I know. Huh? Slimmer groups. I don't know. Different technologies to put the most of the ones I'm used to is two pins uh, for the most part. I don't know. That would be a good question for the guys, the lighting guys. Why do you guys remember the hard questions when they're not here? When we, um, next quarter, Tao, we can research and see. I'm sure there is a difference, in, in the, but when um, when we go to Devs and Associates, um, most of the stuff that are, at least I'm familiar with is two, two, two pens. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll ask them what's the advantage. You can buy the same, almost the same fixture for either or hardware. I'm sure it's somewhere here, guys. Okay. Um, let me go to the chapter five, 15 because of lack of time, guys. Um, chapter 15 talk about uh, luminaires. Ashley, a luminaire is right, right that one above your head. There's the diffuser. Diffusers, like that one, guys. What does a diffuser take the light and diffuse it and evenly distribute the light in the area that we need to lit? Number one. Number two, you have the lamp itself. You have a ballast. If it's a ballasted lamp, the ballast drives the lamp. You have, a ref if you open this one, guys, you have the frame of the fixture to protect the fixture. You have a reflector, so the, the light, when it go up, it will be reflected with the reflector and shoot it down. So that's all the fixtures that you can do. A couple of, uh, I know you guys have done this one, and I'm going to do it in a few seconds here but with you. If you have, if you have one, if you have an area and you need to do one fixture, when we pick a fixture, guys, there's so many reasons why we pick that particular light. Minimum, almost code-wise, minimum, every habitable room needs one light, at least one light. If, if you have one light, where would you put the one light? Right in the dead center of the room. That's if you have one light. Right in the dead center. So if you have a, if you have a room like this, and this is just light distribution, and I need to put only one fixture, where would I put the one fixture? You draw diagonal here and diagonal here, and you put the lighting fixture right in the center of that area. Right in the center of that area. Make sense? Make sense. Now take this. If you have two rooms, if you have two, if you have you have to put two lights in one area, two lights in one area. What I usually do, guys, divide the area if you have two lights into two halves, and you put the same thing: one, two, and one, two. And you put your fixture in the middle of the first area and in the middle of the second area. Make sense? These are rules of laying out distributing fixtures. Any question about this? If you have four, and I'm going to leave this after four. If you have four of them, here's a four, and I decide divide it into four. I have four fixtures. Same thing. Cross this, cross this, cross this, cross this, and then you put your fixture right in the middle of each one of them. Right in the middle of each one of them. That will get you the best distribution, the best distribution of your fixture. Done. The best distribution. Okay, so that's if it's one fixture. There's a couple of rules, guys, that we have to adhere to. Here's a couple of rules that they give you, a couple of rule of thumb. I told you the rule of thumb that we did when we're going to be doing calculation. The distance, if you have an incandescent lamp, um, a round lamp like this, incandescent, fluorescent, or whatever, can you guys see the distance between the lamps, center to center? This is D, and from the wall, it's one third of a D. And I know I told you half of a D. You can use one third, you can use half. For our calculation, we've been used half, right? To make it easier, but you can go as, as low as one third. Any questions about this? I don't want you to get confused half. I want you to continue doing my calculation for half the distance. Okay, now if you have a fluorescent light like this, they take the distance, can you guys see the D, the distance, distance between the rows and the columns? And they want you to put now maximum, preferred, minimum. So what they're saying, guys, is you prefer, preferably, you move away one foot if you have a fluorescent grid, one foot preferably, and um, to move from this area, and from this side to move preferably two feet, so two and a half. Can you see that two and a half? And then grid your pictures, two and a half grid your pictures. I will. I use one rule. When I do these guys, I use one rule. Remember the rules that we're gonna do in a, in a second here, is the distance between these, these pictures, D 
and this distance is d minus divided by two. So d d d the center to center is d between the wall and the fixture is d over two or half of d. Any question as about this? But these are rule of thumb as you lay out your fixture. If you have a line like this, look at that. It refers two and a half away, and then refer one foot, and you grid your you grid your um, your uh, your line. Same thing over here. That magic number two and a half, and then one foot, two and a half, and one foot, and you grid your floor of lights. Most of the time, you're gonna end up with the same thing, guys. Two and a half. Here's what they're talking about, guys. When two and a half, what is it? Two and a half feet. Are we doing two and a half right here? Look at it. This is two, two feet, right? Right. This is four. So this is two. You put your fixture from the wall, and then from here. Well, this is a classroom, so it's different. From here, you would you'd refer two and a half from here, and then you put your fixture, the center of your fixture. Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Most of the time, actually, if you have a grid, most of the time, 99% of the time, guys, they will, they will you don't want your fixture right against the wall unless there's a reason for that, like a uh, board or something. So you move most of the time two feet because the grid goes two by two. They don't go half one by one. Two by two is a regular two from this side, and from the other side is also two. So two by two, and you start grading your fixture. You go from that corner, two by two, two by two, and you start your grid. Grading your fixtures. Any question about these rule of thumb of distribution of lights? I know we use McCormick and McCormick, um, not McCormick. We use uh, Lithonia, and Lithonia takes into consideration all these too. I want you guys to keep this one as layout fixture method of laying out your fixture. Hardware, different hardware that can go with it, mounting it. Um, a couple of things, guys. Uh, when we have cans, when we have cans, the only thing listed to you, wired millimeters, when you have cans, you have to have, every time you have a, a box and you have a fixture web, because remember that fixture web, uh, fixture web right in here that go to the fixture, fixture web to go to the fixture, and boxes. These two boxes have to be accessible by code. And actually, as we all know, and Phil, I can't go from here and put a receptacle here, can I? Can you go from this box and be the receptacle? This box, a dedicated box for the fixture. Though this box, if it has to be accessible, obviously. If it's accessible, I can't come from here and put a receptacle, no problem, if it's accessible. The box that come with the fixture, guys, is a dedicated fixture. Take this, I bring my grand circuit to this fixture, can I go from this fixture, it has a J box in it, and, and come over here and feed this receptacle? No, because it's not part of the fixture, the lighting system. But by the way, I can't come from here and to the switch, because the switch is part of the fixture, or the lighting system, that lighting system. So keep in mind, the box that comes with the fixture is dedicated for the fixture. Does that make sense? This is coming in, in, in residential, Nick. They catch you all the time. You have all these cans with a lot of boxes. It's so easy to come with a home run to a can and go to a receptacle. Very easy. This box is dedicated for the fixture. This is not a, a standalone J box. Can I get some clarification? What if you put, you know, on that fixture box to, to a J box? Yep. And then from that J box, turn it to the receptacle. Still. You can't go to the fixture. You can't go through the fixture. As long as you don't go through the fixture, it's okay. Yeah. As long as you can't go through the fixture, it's okay. Or through a box that came with the fixture. So this is a big deal, guys, with installation. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, we, when we talked about residential, guys, we talked if your fixtures, not commonly used in commercial, in residential a lot, if your fixture is to be buried by insulation, not commonly again used in commercial, in residential all the time, then your fixture have to be rated for what? IC, insulation content, right? Everybody knows that from last year, IC. Otherwise, if you don't want to, if you don't want to insulate them, then you have to put a distance, separate them from thermal insulation uh, with three inches, I believe. Three inch separation, and who's gonna go, yeah, move the insulation. So most of these 
um, insulation covered IC, uh, fixture goods or IC rated fixtures. Again, I don't like to talk about this one in commercial, but it, you could. You could be in a situation, a strip mall, sheet rocked, right? And you need to put some cans in there. Pay, pay attention a lot to IC rated. A lot of stuff is IC rated now. Good application, guys. This is a great application where you can bring your home run from here. Um, Rob, my friend, here's my 20 amp. Fixture to fixture to fixture. Now here's my, from here to a receptacle. Can I do that? Is this okay? I came from fixture to J box to J box. These are all J box come with the fixture. Can I do that? Can I feed the receptacle at the end? No. It's not meant to. How about I switch though? So this is a new. How about if I have a switch to switch them? Switch that related to them. Can I do that? Three way switch? Yeah, no problem because they're part of the switching system. So pay attention to these boxes that came with the cans, guys, are dedicated for the cans and lighting fixture. A lot of support when you put your fixtures. Um, this is my favorite. They're taking they're taking lighting fixture, guys, and showing us how to uh, wire a three, I call it three phase circuits. Um, can you guys see that? How they, they brought um, these fixture right in here on phase A, and these fixture right here on phase B, and these fixture right here on phase C, right? Right? Typical. That's what you guys were doing with me when we were circuiting. I told you to go adjacent odds or adjacent even, right? one three five or two four six that's exactly what you're doing by doing it this way you're sharing a neutral who cares you saved yourself one wire there's issue with harmonics here right if they have a balance with harmonics what you have to do in a case like this most likely like we have one two three four five five fixtures if each one of these fixtures suppose each fixture is taking two amps two amps so two amps times five is here's a 10 amp here and here's also a 10 amp here, and here's also a 10 amp here. So remember, this circuit, if it's a 20 amp circuit, I can pull 16 amps continuously out of there. If I put 10 amps, 10 amps, guys, from each one of these, I'm still below, way below the 16. Even even with the harmonic, highly unlikely I'm not going to jump over over that one. Now, if I go 16 of the, I, I, I cab it up to the 16, and then when you become worried about sharing a neutral. So each one of these guys carrying a, a 10 amps, what do you guys think the neutral is going to be carrying if there's no harmonics? 10, 10, 10. What would the neutral be carrying? Zero. If there's harmonics, the neutral will be carrying zero. If there's harmonics, under the worst scenario, guys, well, most likely, if there's a harmonic, the neutral will be carrying under these circumstances as much current as the phase, and that will be 10 amps. Now, I'm not going to tell you, uh, Nick, my friend, if I have number 12 conductor landing on this circuit breaker, is this an issue? If the neutral is carrying 12, 10 amps, is this a big deal for a number 12 conductor? No. Even if you have harmonic and all this stuff, 10, 10, 10, 10, and you got, uh, because of harmonic, you got full neutral, 10 amps, and each one of these conductors, remember, these are 12 uh, four conductors, number 12, THHN and um, THHN, right? No problem. Each one of these conductors is capable of carrying uh, continuously 16 amps, and I'm loading each one of them 10 amps. Is there any problem with that? No. Any question guys about circuiting? Typical circuiting where you get a bunch of lights, put them in phase A, Probably this is the best way of circuiting if you have a commercial building. Then the circuit, the name of the circuit here will be, this is circuit 1, 3, 4, uh, 1, 3, 5, or 2, 4, 6, right? Three adjacent odds or three adjacent evens. Why? Because they're coming from two different phases. If, if they're adjacent odds or even, they're coming from different phases. Any questions? Yes, sir. Well, 
Yep. Definitely not one, two, three, four. That way you can share it. Share a note. Definitely. Yes, sir. For all of them? Uh, yeah, if you buy three pole switch. You can you can buy three pole switch. Um, and or um, or a contactor, three pole contactor, or an occupancy sensor. Yeah. I can buy an occupancy sensor, guys, three pole driven occupancy sensor or occupancy sensor that drives a three pole contact. So here's what you're saying is here's contact one, contact two, contact three, bam, 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 right? And here's all your fixture, 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 bam, bam, bam. So all what I'm doing right now is that I have an occupancy sensor right here, occupancy sensor that actually interferes with the coil here. So every time anybody moves into this area, the occupancy sensor will see you and will turn a one three pole relay. Bam, bam, bam. or actually one single pole relay. Doesn't have to be three pole. This, these could be three relays driven by the same occupancy sensor, three single pole relay, or one three pole relay. Does that make sense? This is called a pole. Everybody knows that that contact is one pole. Two pole, three pole. So this is a three pole relay or one or three single pole relays. No problem. If you want to do it manually, then you're, you're looking at something like this. Um, and a switch. So phase A, phase B, phase C. And this is a switch and go up here. And these are. And these are all one together. So this is three pole. Snap switch? Yes, snap switch. Three pole though. Can you can see these are all three poles. They're uh, they're coming from they're all one handle. It's one handle, one switch. One inside internally, it's three pole. Not commonly used, but because you can't land phase A and phase B on the same side. What happens if you put phase A and phase B? Short them. Point. Any question guys about this? So this is really what the whole calculation here. Okay, let me see. Yeah, in 2008, Dustin, they came and they said, if you have a, a double-ended fluorescent light, like right this one above your head, two ends, you have to have a disconnect for the ballast, a ballast disconnect. In 2011, they said even if you change the ballast on this one, you have to have a disconnect. The industry guys have standardized with this tiny little disconnect. So what what happened is this will go to the this will be going to the ballast ballast from here and here at one e m, right? So what happened? This is inside fixture one. So if you are if you are to change, you know why they guys did that? Anybody knows why they did that? We just got sick of these um, killing uh, janitors. A janitor will go up there and they go change the ballast hot and they unscrew the ballast because a lot of us like to work hot. And on a 120, your chances of surviving is good. 277, most of these hospitals and buildings are burning lights at 277. So you go get zapped by 277, what's going to happen to you? You're done. So now to change the ballast, it's really a piece of cake now. You take this one, these are load interrupters. You unplug them, you push, you push right in here. When you push it, you interrupt, it is fully insulated, you, are, you open it, and now the whole fixture is dead, including the ballast, change the ballast, and do all this stuff. This is requirement on all fixture that has two ends. Safety. In 2011, if your project manager fell, you also require them in retrofit. If you retrofit equipment, you have to change them. So pay attention to that disconnect for fixture. If you don't like this, so what happened is, is your, uh, yeah, a couple of, another way of, of wiring guys is pulling a neutral like this. Can you guys see how everything is coming from a neutral? Everything is coming from one neutral. You can see where phase A, phase B. So this is phase A fixture, this is phase A fixture, this is phase B, C, B, and C. Can you guys see that? A, B, C, A, B, C, all these fixtures. 
We're not sharing a neutral here because heavily harmonic, for example, or the specification of the engineer said um, a, circ a, a, a neutral with every circuit because of harmonics. In a case, if I have to do it this way, by the way, I will load my fixture. If this is a 20 amp circuit, actually, I will load this one up to say, say to 16 amps. But sometimes I might have to allow for future expansion. Also gonna be careful. So 16 amps, I might have to go 14 amps on that. Why allow two amps for future expansion? Meaning I'm allowing you two fixtures to add in the future if you so decided. This is where you don't have to worry about harmonics. You're pulling a neutral with every circuit. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions about that? Okay, uh, recess. Um, I want to remind you guys, fixtures can be surface mounted, recessed, sus uh, suspended, and all this good stuff that you can do. Okay, the last thing guys, is about clothes closet. Clothes closet, if you have a clothes closet, if this is a closet here that you're supposed to go clothes closet, they define this bay as six feet. Um, 12, this base is 12 inches, this is this base is 24 inches, and this base six feet. If you have a closed closet, as we all know, guys, this is also coming from residential. The area up to the bar where you put your clothes, or six feet, whichever is larger, and a width of 24, and if you have a shelf 20, 12 inches, or the width of the shelf all the way up to the height, this is called the sacred cow shall not be touched. Does that make sense? I'm a closet all the way up to six feet and 20 feet in front of me. That area, I can't put a fixture inside this area. Can I get a thumbs up? We know that, how to define it. Okay, 24 inches. Um, and this is where, this is a 12 inches here. And this is 24 inches, just looking at it from the top. All right, let's go to what can you, what type of fixture you can put on these. If you have a walk-in closet like this, the same thing guys. B and A is 20, 12 inches, B is 24 inches, up to 6 feet. Can you guys see 6 feet? A is, in this case, A is uh, 12 inches, 12 inches both sides, uh, 24 inches. These areas take a cow. All right, here's what you cannot do. Permitted, permitted lights. I'm going to go all the way, and we did this one in the residential, guys. All these type of fixtures shall not be installed in a closed closet, period. You can't put them. Um, not permitted, incandescent lamp, pendant, uh, surface mounted, or with a stem or whatever. All these types shall not be installed. So these are um, the, the places. Uh, permitted by, you can have surface mounted incandescent LED or fluorescent. Surface mounted uh, recessed, either one of them. So, but these are the bottom ones not permitted. So let's go. Okay, and the last thing I want to share, guys, about when you put the closed closet, remember that sacred cow area that you cannot enter? If you have, here's how I summarize it. Everything except, everything except LEDs, believe it or not, and incandescent lamps. Surface mounted. Can you guys see how surface mounted? They're 12 inches. That's the only difference. All other lights, 6 inches. All other lights, all the types of lights, surface mounted, recessed, you name it, are six inches except LEDs and incandescent lamps if they are only surface mounted. If they're recessed, six inches. Surface mounted, 12 inches. So you have to maintain 12 inches. Anybody knows why the LEDs are lumped sumped with the incandescent lamps, which is the worst of the worst? The first question when they teach code update, guys, because that's a code update, adding LEDs. Anybody knows why LEDs are lump sum with incandescent lamps? The driver of the LED, the one that takes AC, chew it, digest it to DC, gets hot. So these LEDs have a driver with them, and these drivers get hot. So that's why they want to treat them, the LEDs, not because they're bad, because the, their driver gets hot. So if you're putting in a closed closet, 12 inches. Everything else, can you get see six inches? Six inches, six inches, six inches. Every type of these is six inches. That's it. Twelve inches. Surface mount, surface mounted, incandescent or LEDs. Everything else, 
six inches. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. There is exception that came in 2008. An exception in 2008. An assembly light. That uh, you're absolutely right. An assembly light. Assembly. You don't custom design. It. It's an assembly. That comes a bar, a lit bar. The bar itself is a light. You're absolutely right. It's an exception. We can install the bar as a light. But you can't wire it. The only thing you can do, you buy it. And it has a J-box at the end. You can wire it from a different location. It's all assembly. You can't build it yourself. That was in 2008 came and, and everybody was so excited when it came. Not me though. You're absolutely right. I have to change it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a um, couple of lights. A couple of fixture guys here that they're talking. And you guys are very familiar with the fixtures that we use right now from the project. The last thing, one last thing, one last thing, Nick. Um, the last thing, guys, in this book, it talks about uh, lighting schedule. And I'm not going to tell you you are the best in lighting schedule because um, I'm going to just just show you one little thing. Here's a lighting schedule, guys, that talks about it's called C Emergency, EM Emergency BT3. Description of it, it's a 2 8 by 10, 32 watt, 28, uh, um, uh, 280 uh, lumens. And peer lamp, instant start, all this information, two of them notes, and paper light. So this is a lighting schedule exactly like we did, guys, in our project. For all, remember, this book, Tao is doing what? This book is following a project. And this is the schedule, lighting schedule for this project. Lighting schedule for this project. They're using LEDs um, in this project, too. Okay. Any question? I flew through them, guys. Sorry. But um, the really review of everything that we've done, you guys, uh, the, the name the name of the game of this core is lights. So really, I think we killed the lights. We're going to do a lot of lighting, guys, this quarter and next quarter. Okay, thank you. That's all we have.